So this is the demonstration of the submandibular salivary gland. This is the location of the submandibular salivary gland in the submandibular triangle. This is the posterior belly of digastric, anterior belly of digastric, inferior border of the mandible, and this is the location. So we are going to eviscerate the gland out, and that's what we are doing just now. Once we remove the submandibular gland from the location, we see that it is deeply grooved on its medial side. And this groove is caused by the lateral border of this muscle here. This is the mylohyoid muscle. The mylohyoid muscle splits the gland into a deep portion and a superficial portion. The superficial part is the one which is related to the submandibular fossa. The deep part is the one which is located in the floor of the mouth. The next important thing we notice is this artery here. This is the facial artery. And that is also making a groove on the posterior aspect of the gland. The facial artery, as it climbs up, it goes under the ramus of the mandible, and as it comes down, it makes a groove, and then it climbs up. So these are the two important grooves that we can see here on the submandibular gland. The submandibular gland, when it was located inside, it was covered by a layer of deep fascia. That is a derivative of the investing layer of deep cervical fascia, which is the same as the fascia which was covering the parotid gland, the masseter, and the submandibular salivary gland. I wanted to mention to you the bed of the submandibular salivary gland. For that, I have completely removed the gland to show you the depth of the submandibular triangle. And we can see the bed of the salivary gland is formed by the floor of the submandibular triangle. And it is composed of three muscles. Number one is this muscle, which I told you in the beginning, the mylohyoid. The second muscle is this one. This is the hyoglossus. And the third muscle is this, which we can see here. This is the middle pharyngeal constrictor. These three muscles constitute the floor of the submandibular triangle, and they also constitute the bed of the submandibular salivary gland. Now let's take a look at the structures that we can see emerging from the deep aspect of the gland. You can see this structure, which I have lifted up here. This is the lingual nerve. The lingual nerve is giving a branch, which carries the secretory fibers, which came from the cauda tympani nerve to the submandibular salivary gland. And it synapses in the submandibular ganglion, which is located close by. And then the postsynaptic fibers, they also travel with the lingual nerve, and it goes into the floor of the mouth, which will supply the tongue, the floor of the mouth, as well as the sublingual salivary gland. So that's one structure that we can see here. The next structure that we see here is this one, which I have lifted up here. This is the submandibular duct or the Wharton's duct. And we can see the close relationship between the duct and the lingual nerve. In fact, the lingual nerve in the floor of the mouth, it winds under the duct. And this is a submandibular vein which drains into the sublingual vein. So the point to be remembered is when we are doing any surgery on the submandibular salivary gland, that is submandibular sialadenectomy or removal of the gland, these are the structures which are likely to be injured. Namely, number one, the facial artery. Number two, the lingual nerve, which can be injured, so we have to safeguard it, especially when we are ligating the duct. The third structure which can be injured is, again to come back to the front end of the submandibular triangle, is this nerve. For a short distance, this is the hypoglossal nerve, which runs in the submandibular triangle, so this can be injured. And another structure which can be injured is this artery here. This is the lingual artery, which also runs in the submandibular triangle for a short distance. And finally, running along the inferior border of the body of the mandible, we have the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. So that is yet another structure which can be injured during surgery of the submandibular salivary gland. Where does this submandibular duct terminate? The submandibular duct, it travels in the floor of the mouth and it terminates in a caruncle in the ferulum of the tongue, which is referred to as a sublingual caruncle in the midline. And that is where it terminates. So that is the location which we use to cannulate this duct to do a silography, to locate any strictures or stones or any dilatation prior to surgery. This is a submandibular silography to show cannulation of the Wharton's duct and the duct itself and the gland. So these are all the points which I wanted to mention about the submandibular salivary gland. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. 
Have a nice day.